behind him, run down back towards the north or to the... Oh, there we go. It sounds like they might have caught something. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Isn't this exciting? Hey, we've got one lioness here. The horse is saying, come, 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 come. So, I don't know. We've got one lioness right next to us. Did that other lioness catch something small? Oh, there they're running. They're running again. It's buffalo. They're onto a herd of buffalo. Look at that. Isn't this amazing? Right next to us, they're chasing buffalo. Hold on, we're going to stick with them. Oh, they got him, they got him, they got him, they got him. Go white light, Eggsy, white light, if you can. Can you switch to normal light? Normal. Yeah, I'll go to normal. Isn't this incredible? I know this is... I know this is difficult for some people to watch, but this is absolutely amazing. The incredible Inkahumas do it again. Well, it's not all over yet. So I haven't switched the car off in case the buffalo comes in this direction. Now that... Okay. I know that's a terrible sound. But this is Africa. This is nature. This is life. I'm shaking with excitement. So what they're trying to do, you see how they're going for his haunches in the soft spot at the back of his legs when they're trying to get him down on the ground. Once he's on the ground, a lot of the battle has been won. Now you see, the other way they bring down, once that buffalo is on the ground, they're going to try to go for its throat or its nose. Look at that, that lioness has been on top the whole time. She's just not letting go. You can see how she's chewing in there. Every little bit of loss of blood and all that will help bring him down. Let's see where he goes. Now you've always got to be careful in these situations that you don't put the vehicle in the wrong place. See, oh, we nearly got that lioness. But you see what she's doing? She's keeping him distracted while the others work on the back. Look, look, see how she's trying to pull his back leg out to get him on the ground. Oh, she's fallen off. Oh, now he's, all right, she's back on. Isn't that amazing? Look at that agility. Look how she's opened up that wound and that blood, as that blood seeps, it's going to weaken him slowly but surely. Now, I know this is sensitive, guys. Um, if you are not comfortable with this type of stuff, please rather don't watch. This is live and this is nature. up a proper fight and you can see how the lions avoid those 
rapier-like horns of the buffalo. This is a battle that's being played out in the African bush for the last 200,000 or so years that lions and buffalo have coexisted. Look at she's going for that Achilles tendon. Look, isn't that incredible? She's trying to weaken him, get him down onto the ground. Oh, he nearly fell there. That. Isn't that amazing? Look at that agility. She fell off and she was back on there in a split second. Now it's going to be interesting to see which lioness, once they get him down, goes for the throat. Just in case he decides to charge this way, we're going to move back a bit. Sometimes it can take as long as an hour and a half uh, for them to get a buffalo completely dead. You can still see he's got quite a lot of fight left in him. See how look. You can see how the blood's starting to flow more freely and that will weaken him slowly. Now remember guys, as hard as this is, the lions have to eat. They've got those eight cubs to feed. See how that lioness keeps trying, they keep trying to get to the front. They keep trying to grab him by the nose or by the throat. But there's still far too much fight in him yet. And they don't want to risk a serious injury at those horns.
at that. Look how he just walks with those lines on top of him. He still hasn't given up yet. Oh dear, my earpiece has come out. Just give me a second, there we go, it's back in. Now Jamie's also arrived. Let's get in a bit closer then, right at the edge of the light there. I'm just gonna move around, get on the right side of him. Oh, he's walking with all those lines on his back. He's just disappeared behind a termite. Okay, let's go to Jamie, she's got a better view. We've just arrived on the scene, and oh my goodness, what a scene to be greeted with. The Inca Homer's on the top of the buffalo, and this is a not at all easy for us to watch. It's always incredibly, incredibly difficult. Sorry, yours. Okay, I'm going to reposition in a moment to get a better view. Sorry, yours. <coughs> thank you. Awesome, thank you. Oh, this is unbelievable. This is so raw to watch something like this. The Inkwoman is proving once again what a phenomenal force they are. A serious force to be reckoned with. Let's go over to Brent, who's got a slightly better view. They nearly got him down there. Um, oh, look at that hook. He nearly got that line as. Oh, we're going to get out of here. See, they're still trying to get, get onto that front side of him. just absolutely amazing. Now a buffalo bull like that can weigh 1500 pounds. Each lioness probably only weighs around 300 pounds. See they're going for those Achilles tendons. They're desperately trying to get this buffalo down. Once he's on the ground it's going to be much easier for them to get in and around that mouth um, safely. Inkahumas are incredible buffalo hunters. Sorry, Eggsy. It's rather a stick than a buffalo. See how he's trying to hook, and that's one of the reasons the lions go for that exact spot when they jump onto the back of the buffalo, just behind the shoulder blades. You see there, it's just out of reach of where he can hook back with his head. And he's almost got his tail completely off. I know this can be very difficult to watch, guys, but this is the lion's meal. It's, it's the survival for those eight Inkuma cubs. It's a big buffalo bull like this. It's a lot of meat for that family. You can actually 
actually hear her crunching in. She's reached the bone, the vertebra in his back, that lioness on the back. You can actually hear her chewing on the, on the, on the bones. See that those lioness are trying, waiting for a half gap. If they can get onto the nose, it's a very common tactic that lions use on big animals like buffalo. If they can get onto the nose, um, what they do is they bite into that nose, and uh, then what happens is it actually starts to slowly drown on its own blood. Okay, so I know you're still listening to me, but you're looking from Jamie. Isn't this incredible? Look at that. Now, I'd say the buffalo's chances of escaping become less and less with every second. There we go, you can hear the boat crunch. Standing by. No, yours, please keep it, it's nice light. Thanks very much. Oh, there he's nearly down, he's nearly down. He nearly fell down. Oh, there we go. Have they got him? They've got him down. Now, who's going to be the brave lioness who goes for the throat or the nose, gets near those horns? Look, there we go. She's got, she's got, oh no, she didn't quite get there. There we go, look, 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 she's going there. I wonder who that is, she's going for the throat. She's got safely under the horns. Now she's gonna go for that nose grip. Now, as we get that nose grip, she, she bursts the, the vein, she digs into the nose, and that buffalo will slowly drown. But it's very, it's still dangerous. Those horns are still there. But when the buffalo's down, the lions have generally, they've won. Now, I know this is difficult, that buffalo is not dead and the other lions are starting to feed already. That is not unusual behavior. I know you're looking at Jamie, I'm just going to try to get around to the other side of the kill. Oh, no, we're going to sit there, we're going to sit there, we're going to sit. look at that. Okay, let's go, what do you think Zander, let's go around to the other side. Gonna get ourselves in the right spot. How's that, Sunday? Cool. There we go. I'm just gonna try to get the spotlight in a spot where it doesn't move. Sounds terrible. But the 
This is nature. This is survival for the Incarnate. See, the faster they get on to that nose, the quicker this ends. nearly over now. Perfect jaws. Now, you can hear those bellows are changing a little bit. There's almost gurgling in the mouth. And that's because of the blood that breathing, you can hear that starting to gurgle. You can see actually how strong a lioness is there. She's getting kicked in the face. No, that's not stopping her. This is hard to watch. Now this is one of the joys of being out after dark. Being able to see the big cat's hunt. the blood starting to gurgle out of that buffalo's nose. He's definitely getting much weaker now. Incredible Inca Unas, Buffalo Hunters. Extraordinary. And you can see now some of the lioness, or the single lioness at the back. She's resting. Now, it would have taken a massive amount of effort for these lines to bring down. Or could there be a male coming? Now, there were tracks of a male around earlier. Oh, 
Where is she off to? Well, there could definitely be a male on the way. Now, any self-respecting male lion within 10 kilometers of here would have heard that. And a male lion is not going to pass up a free meal. She went. She... Or she could go back and fetch the cubs. That could be where she's off to. Still fighting away to suffocate that buffalo. Now, of course, there's no standard sort of ranking or hierarchy amongst a lioness and Romy's wondering who gets to jump on, who gets to grab the dangerous end. Is it the same lioness every time or is it, does it vary? Well, Romy, I actually saw three different lionesses on top of this buffalo today and I've seen different lionesses go for that kill grip on buffalo. So I just think whoever happens to be in the right position or maybe the lioness that put the least effort into actually bringing down of the buffalo. As you can see that lioness is really tired and she was up on top, probably one of the lionesses that were on top for quite a while and that takes incredible physical strength to hold on to that bunking, uh, that bucking buffalo. I mean, and I think probably the, the, the lioness that's in the best position and probably the least exerted from the, the rest of the hunt will grab that all-important nose or throat hold. Now, with lionesses, you don't see the, the throat hold as often as the nose hold on big buffalo bulls. As it, they might, their jaws might not be big enough to clamp close the larynx, but male lions will, will, will use that throat hold even on a big buffalo. Again, I do and apologize, again, I do to, apologize to our sensitive viewers. I know this is difficult to watch, um, but this is alive, and we are here to observe nature in all its facets. So this is part of nature, a crucial part of nature, and not something people get to see very often. So this is absolutely incredible. We are live with the inco incredible Inkahuma pride, brought down a massive buffalo bull. He's not quite dead yet, but he's getting closer. Here I'm struggling to breathe more and more. So what's happening is his lungs are slowly filling with blood. So what actually happens now is he'll actually drown. You can see kicking is becoming weaker and weaker. She'll only let go once he's dead.
So those claws are fully extended, gripped into that neck, and she's got a vice-like clamp with her jaws around his nostrils. Again, not for sensitive viewers, but one must remember this is the future of the Inkahoma cubs. The fact that their mothers are able to hunt so successfully and hunt big prey successfully. You can see the others starting to feed before that buffalo has expired. Now, Liss is wondering, will they eat before they go fetch the cubs? Well, one lioness has already beetled off back towards the cubs, so she might actually go fetch the cubs before feeding. So, difficult to say, it all depends on the situation. So, they were hungry, but they weren't too hungry. So they might they might go fetch the cubs before feeding. He's nearly, he's nearly gone. He's nearly gone to join the great buffalo herd in the sky. Sheila said the lioness is trying to suffocate with a nose hold, but the buffalo is breathing through its mouth. Will she actually succeed in suffocating it uh, with that nose hold? So Sheila, what she's actually doing is if she is on that nose hold, the, as she keeps biting in that nasal cavities back into that buffalo's lungs. So what's actually happening, she's not suffocating, she's not suffocating she's the buffalo, she's drowning it. There we go, you can see the blood around her mouth and you can hear that buffalo breathing. So the more she bites into that nose and the more blood that starts flowing down the nasal cavity back into the lungs is what's going to kill that buffalo. You can actually hear how it's breathing now, it's starting to almost gurgle. See those leg kicks are getting weaker and weaker. I don't think it's going to be too long now. She's just changing her grip. See how she's biting like that again. It's to get that bleeding going, to get more blood. 
going down into those nostrils. Now that coupled with the massive loss of blood this buffalo is suffering from its behind. And the two other lionesses have really opened up his rump. Actually almost look like they're almost there we go, you can see that into his stomach cavity already. So that yeah, there you go, his intestines are coming out already. So that massive trauma uh, and loss of blood at the base coupled with that not suffocation, that drowned grip of the lioness in the front. Um, you probably find this buffalo has been in shock for some time and, and I hope not feeling anything. So D is wondering why are the lionesses using that nose hold as opposed to the more traditional throat grip and the suffocation grip. Now with a big buffalo bull like this D you'll probably find his larynx is too wide. So when lions grab something around the neck there's a, a gap between their their teeth so between their so they've got their canines which act as an anchor and then their premolars and their molars now between those two there's a big gap and that gap is actually specially designed to pinch close uh, the larynx of animals now with the lioness you'll probably find that this these buffalo this big buffalo bull his larynx is too big for her to, to actually get that grip going. So she's unable to get or pinch the, the larynx closed. So that is why you'll often see lioness prefer the, the, nose, the nose hold on buffalo uh, as opposed to the throat hold, the more traditional what we see with lions and smaller prey. Now, as you can see, her, her paw there below the mouth, it almost looks like she's holding its mouth closed, but it's not. She's just using that as an anchor. You can see the mouth still open. Every now and then she gives a little shake or bite. It's, it's to, again to increase that blood flow into the lungs. I'm not sure what time we started. Do you know, Zander? <laughs> no idea. The excitement took over. Um, but I missed that. How long was that? It's been 40 minutes since they started, jump, started jumping on this buffalo. Now, it's probably been a bit shorter because of the drought, but I have seen it take nearly two hours to kill a big buffalo bull. And that was with a bigger pride of lions in the Inkumas. But that buffalo was in prime condition. So these buffalo bulls, uh, I could only see bulls, I didn't see any other buffalo as they charged past us. And uh, these bulls are old, past prime, and this drought would have definitely had an effect on them. And it does make them an easier, easier target. By, by no means an easy target. And here the breathing getting much shallower. And you can hear that you can see she's, she's putting extra force on, she's biting harder now. I don't think 
it's long now. You can see there's the yeah. breathing getting much, much shallower. The, the, almost the leg kicks now are almost non existent. finally expires. The leg kicks very, very weak now. now before this it's the end of this poor big boy You can see she almost senses it's close to the end. Now, as I said, it's an old buffalo bull. Wingnut's wondering how old. I guess probably between 12 and 14 years old. And so past his prime. And about 10, 11, they're pushed out of the, the big breeding herds. And they live in these bachelor groups. And these Inkahumas have been specializing in these bachelor groups of buffalo this dry season. Now that is actually stomach content on her shoulder there that sprayed out of the intestines as they pulled them out. There we go, you can see that on her neck there. It's not blood, it's buffalo stomach content that sprayed out as the other lioness pulled out their intestines. There's a very good chance there'll be a male lion here by tomorrow. If there are any in the vicinity, they definitely would have heard that buffalo's distress calls. wondering can another lioness take over the nose grip it is possible Meg but unlikely in this situation where the buffalo is down can you hear now the breathing is getting very very difficult
starting to become sometimes some big gaps between the, the breaths. Hi, William in Oregon. William would like to know, why do they always seem to start eating it from the rear end? Well, with buffalo, it's the safe end because they, they'll start feeding or actually opening up that area to try weaken it during the hunt. And secondly, it's the nice, the rump, the nice tender, lots of meat there. So you'll find a lot of animals, um, especially cats, will we'll start eating at the rear end, at the rump, because it, in case they lose it to another lion or hyenas or whatnot, they get the most amount of meat in the shortest part of time without having to chew through any bones. Now, well, is that other lion that's going in to help or is she just going to start feeding? like the other lioness has come to expedite this proceedings. There you, go, you can see there's that stomach content oh, sorry, on that lioness's neck. Again, apologies to our sensitive viewers. It's nearly over. Even if she had to let go of that nose hold now, there's no way this poor boy would survive. not relinquished that grip on his nose since she got there and she won't till he takes his last breath Now that crunch, crunch you hear is that lioness at the tail cutting open the skin. See how she's sliced the skin open there. You can actually see it's almost like someone's taken a pair of scissors and cut a perfectly straight line. Now her premolars, which is what she's using to cut open to get to the skin, to get to the meat, are literally like a really sharp pair of side cutters. Mm. 
Now again, apologies to our sensitive viewers. This is live. This is raw. This is uncut. This is happening right now in the African bush. And if you are a little bit sensitive, just look away. It'll be over in about 10 or so minutes. The buffalo should be dead. And I know it is disturbing, but one must remember, this is the future for these lions. They've got eight little cubs to feed. So a big buffalo bull like this is a great catch for the evening. Oh, it's still kicking. I can't be far now. Just trying to watch carefully to see when he starts stops breathing. Now sometimes you will have leg kicking after the animal is dead. It's just their nerves. The heart will still be pumping. See those look almost more like those nerve reactions. Not coordinated. Yeah. I think he's expired. Have a look at his stomach, see if it still looks like it's breathing. Okay, just move a little bit higher up onto the, there we go, onto that part of the stomach. I just want to have a look. He's, 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 he's almost stopped breathing, but he's still alive. He's gasping. There we go, she's let him go. It's done. Here we go. Now she's going to lie down and have a well-earned rest before she even thinks about starting to feed. And here we go. One, two lionesses resting. The third eating. I wonder where the fifth in Kuhuma is. And the fourth one, I think, might have gone back to fetch the cubs. Now, all that sniffing around earlier might have been after these buffalo. So I wish, wouldn't it be nice if we could speak lion? What I find incredible with lions is the non-verbal communication. So how they read each other's body language. Oh, there comes the small intestine. So it's incredible that they're able to, to, to sort of maneuver and flank, all depending on the movement and body language of the other animals. And I think that's probably one of the most fascinating things for me about lions is is that non-verbal that non-vocal so not verbal they can't speak but that non-vocal communication so of course lions have their vocal communications their roars their contact calls but in the hunt they can't because it'll give away their position
and once they get that buffalo open uh, generally they'll try get for the, the sort of high value items heart, kidney, lung, livers, high in vitamins and minerals particularly the liver, high iron content but as you can see they're not fussy those are the intestines and that is stomach content coming out as she pulls through she obviously doesn't eat that sort of half digested grass what she's really after there is that the actual lining of the intestine now she doesn't want to eat but now just because there's another lioness there will growl at you I think she's gonna lie down for a bit more well, she might head back it is one of the mothers she might head off to go fetch cubs Or she might head off down towards Buffalo's Hook for a drink. There you go, she's walking straight towards Jamie. Now she's changing her direction. She might, maybe she's heading back towards the cups, who knows? I know you guys can still see that lioness with Jamie. I can't see her at all now. So there we go. We're with the two remaining lionesses. I wonder if she's going to go fetch those cubs. I think she's going to go for a drink at Buffalo's Hook first. Now the fact that there's almost zero fighting around this carcass means that these lions have been incredibly well fed over the last while and that is, the drought has definitely been aiding them. So normally in a situation like this, if these lions had been desperately hungry, there would be much growling, snarling and beating of each other uh, at, as they took down the buffalo and started feeding. Well, it seems like everyone's off. I'm sure one lioness will stay. The next one's off down the road. I can't see it. That is another one of the mothers that's moved away. There she goes. So four lionesses, maybe it's only amber eyes left behind. And the three mothers have gone off to fetch the cubs. Let's have a look at the Yeah, that doesn't look like a lactating lioness. So that means the missing lioness is the youngest female. Maybe she's off entertaining a Birmingham boy. The last time, or not the last time, the time before last year when we saw the Incahumas uh, grab a buffalo, it was Amber Eyes who was on the nose. This time it wasn't, so there we go, that also answers that question. It's not always the same line in the same spot.
Isn't this amazing? We're sitting here in the middle of the African bush live. And remember, if you have any questions about what just happened, about what's going on, remember to send them through to us at questions at wildearth.tv or use the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. It's incredible. It's just sort of the excitement's down, the buffalo's down. Sort of take a moment. I tend to get very excited over a butterfly. So imagine how excited I get when we get to see incredible behavior like that. And of course, a lot of people get worried and think we, we're all after the death and the, and the blood and the guts and the gore. It's not that. And so we get to see this incredible animal behavior that so few people in the world ever get to witness. And just guess what? We just witnessed it live. Now Dee is wondering if a male lion came along, would this female leave? Well, not necessarily leave Dee, but um, she would probably have to leave her spot at the kill for him. And he might chase off and they can be quite selfish, only liking to feed by, them, by themselves. As I said, it'll be incredibly un unlikely that there won't be a male lion tomorrow. I think it's very likely there will be a male. Now, those big boys, they hear that buffalo go boo, and they come a jogging. So it took probably just under 50 or just under an hour for this buffalo to die, which is about normal 40 minutes to an hour. I'm sure a few of you are wondering where the hyenas are. Now at the moment, our hyena clan has moved a bit further to the northwest. So we're not seeing them too much, but for hyenas to steal this kill from lions, you can work on an average of three hyenas to one lion. So there would have to be, if all five lionesses were present, there'd have to be 15 hyenas for them to sort of mob the, the, the Nkuma pride off this carcass. Now, if you add a male into the equation, the hyenas will stay away. It's very, very seldom and that there are hyenas brave enough to take on a male lion. He's just that much stronger and that much more powerful than the females. drive back. Kitty cat luck seems to be with me still. <laughs> now from the incredible Incahumas across to James with the Kichwet Tembo pride I think. 